Hey everyone, I'm Mine, and this is set number 21173, the Sky Tower from the LEGO Minecraft theme. This set contains 565 pieces, one minifigure, and three buildable Minecraft mobs, and retails for $59.99 in the US. This set was sent to me by the LEGO group through the LEGO Master Network, but all opinions expressed in this video are my own. So the Sky Tower is split into three individual builds. We have the actual tower, we have the house, and then we have the little farm off to the side. As the name may suggest, this is supposed to be a tower up in the sky, so all the different pieces are built on top of white plates to represent clouds, and then transparent pieces on top of them to make it look like they're floating in the air. That is something very cool for LEGO Minecraft, because obviously in actual Minecraft, gravity is not really a thing outside of like sand and gravel, so floating structures are a pretty common thing to see in actual Minecraft, but we've never really seen LEGO try to tackle that. And they did it in this set, and I have to say it looks really cool. So let's go through each one of these individual builds, starting with the actual tower. The actual sky tower is very vertical, you can see it goes up almost completely straight. At the very bottom you can see the actual grass platform is held up by like a transparent windshield piece, and then it also has some vines coming off, implying that these vines might go all the way down to the ground and you can climb up the vines to actually get here. On top of like the actual grass platform, there's some tan pieces. These could represent like birch planks or sandstone. And then above that, they use teal bricks, which I believe are meant to represent warped planks. It's really cool to see lots of nether update items included in this set, because the nether update was relatively new at the time that these sets came out. And it creates a really unique look for this set, because we've never really seen too many nether update blocks in previous LEGO Minecraft sets. So I think it's cool how it uses nether items, even though it isn't a nether set. But yeah, the teal is pretty clearly supposed to be warped planks, and then the black pillars above that I think are supposed to be black stone walls. You have another larger vine hanging down up here to get up to this platform at the top. This can actually be rotated out or down, or you can remove it completely, it's just attached with a few clips. And then at the top of that vine you get to this platform where there's a lot of room to post figures up here if you want. There's more vines just hanging down for aesthetic purposes. In between those vines there's more of those black stone walls. And this essentially serves as a platform to fly with the elytra. It's a place where the minifigure can stand up high and use the firework rocket to launch off of the tower and fly even higher up into the air. I think this is really cool. This is another like really good representation of something you would see in an actual Minecraft world. I'm sure many Minecraft players who have unlocked the Elytra make towers like this to be able to jump off of it and fly through the air. So I think it's very very cool to see that translated here. And then above all that on the roof you have some black pieces as well as some jumper pieces. The black piece is probably supposed to represent uh, black stone stairs. Again more nether blocks which are very cool to see. This roof can also be removed but you will see why that can happen in a moment. But now let's move on to the house. The house is the biggest and best looking part of this build. Again, it uses lots of nether blocks. The entire roof is made out of warped planks and you have soul lanterns out the front right here. Just like on the tail, you have a vine coming down and playing that this goes all the way down to the ground. But obviously it cuts off because that's what makes sense for this set. And because this part of the build is so big, there is lots of different transparent pieces that hold it up. Those are just really, really useful parts to have. They look great. The entrance to the house as well as this chimney off to the side uses more of those black stone pillars. And the door out the front is gray. I believe this is probably supposed to represent an iron door. I don't know if we've gotten them in LEGO Minecraft before. I know I certainly have it, but I wouldn't be surprised if they came in the set like a few years ago or something. And I guess this teal out the bottom is probably meant to represent a warped planks pressure plate, because otherwise you would have no way to get into this house without a button or something. But yeah, of course, you can open that door and it gives you access to the interior, but it's hard to get in there and it's dark, so you can take off the roof to make it a little bit easier. On the interior of the house, there's a few different things going on. Embedded in the one wall, you actually have a furnace. I think that's really cool because it actually connects to the chimney. That's another thing that feels like it's something that would happen in actual Minecraft. Players will connect a furnace to their chimney to thematically make it seem like the furnace is working through the chimney, but in reality, the furnace block is all you need, but I think it's really, really cool how they embedded it in the wall. I think that is a really nice touch. There's a stone cutter off to the side. There's also a crate right here, which I guess is meant to represent a Minecraft barrel. Nothing in it by default, but the player character in the set holds both a firework and a trident, so if you wanted to take one of those off, you could put it in the barrel instead. Around the back of the house, there was an anvil, and then of course on the other side, there was a crafting table. It wouldn't make sense to not have a crafting table on this set. No bed or anything in here, which is a little bit strange, but the decorations you do get are pretty cool, and as always, they're all on circular pieces, so it's very easy to remove them and move them around if you want. The only one you can't really do that for is the furnace in the back, but everything else comes off pretty easily. Putting the roof back on, I actually think the roof has a really nice design to it. Like, obviously, yeah, it's blocky, it's like a Minecraft, but I don't know, I love all the different slopes. It really captures what it looks like to build out of stairs in actual Minecraft. I think the designers captured this absolutely perfectly, I love it. And here's a close look at that chimney over on the side, it's cute. However, a cool customizability option you have with this set is you can actually take this roof off and attach the roof of the sky tower that we had taken off previously. Then coming back to the actual tower we can disconnect the tan parts from the green base and attach that to the jumper plates at the top of the house now. And now where the original roof of the tower went we can put the roof of the house. And there you go, there's an alternate build option. Instead of having two separate builds, the house and the tower, they can combine to make one giant build. 
I actually do think this has a really cool look to it. It almost looks like it's a mage tower or something. Personally, I do prefer them as separate builds, but I think this is a really cool option to have, and I appreciate how easy it is to switch the two up. The original base of the tower is left a little barren, but if you want, you can move some of the accessories from the inside of the house out to here. And then finally, the last part of the set is the smallest, but we have a tiny little sky farm. It looks like we have potatoes growing here, maybe beets as well. And then there's a little bit of water, which cascades into a waterfall. And this is super cute. It provides you a little bit more to play with. And the idea of a waterfall going like down through the clouds to the bottom of the world is just so fun. It just fits perfectly in the world of Minecraft. And that's why I really, really like this. And it's held up by a single transparent piece again. This set also comes with two phantoms. The phantoms were an all new mob that were introduced for this set. And at least as of the time of me recording this, have not come in any other sets. And they are pretty well represented in Lego form. They have a printed piece out the front with these bright green eyes. They use these rectangular pieces with clips on the end as wings, so you're able to hinge them up, hinge them down. And then the head and the tail are both on ball joints so you can move them around. In this set, the phantoms also come on transparent bars so you're able to attach them to builds, so that way you can have it look like they're flying and circling around the builds. So for example, I can attach that to the roof of the house in this set. And there we go, and now it kind of looks like the phantom is flying around the roof of the house. So if you attach both of them to different parts of your world, it actually adds a lot of life to it. Yeah, I really like these guys. The phantoms are super obnoxious mobs in actual Minecraft, but in LEGO Minecraft, they're pretty cool. Very, very happy to get them them here. And I think they're translated over pretty well, especially considering like how weird those mobs look in actual Minecraft. They did a nice job. But I think that's about all I have to show you with the builds. Now let me move on to the one minifigure as well as the one other mob in this set. So here's the one and only actual minifigure in this set. This guy's referred to in the official set description as a pilot. I guess I can kind of see that. But anyway, his accessories are a trident as well as a firework rocket. The trident is a really awesome piece. It was introduced in the same way that this set came out. And the cool thing about the tridents is you always get two of them in the set. The tridents are, for some reason, a set that comes with an extra. So because you get one with this guy, you also get another that you can give to whatever character you want. The trident is a super cool accessory, though I love, like, the pixelated prongs at the top. It's a really, really cool touch. And then the firework rocket goes along with the elytra on his back. This is not the first set to include elytra, but it's only come in one other set before, but it's a pretty iconic part of Minecraft, especially late game Minecraft, so it's cool to see it represented in the Lego, and I appreciate it coming in a second set, so I can have two sets of it. But yeah, the Elytra is just these two giant pixelated wing pieces, you can move them out, move them in. They're just attached on a transclear neck bracket, and they can very easily be moved to any other Minecraft figure you want to put them on. The firework rocket with them, though, is a nice touch, because firework rockets are how you usually propel Elytra in actual Minecraft. So this set is like properly representing how the game works. I think that's super cool. This player character is also wearing a netherite helmet. The netherite helmets only ever come in one other set, so it's very, very cool to get that here. He has netherite legs as well, but netherite legs are just gunmetal gray legs, which are fairly common. So that part is cool thematically, but in just like an overall general Lego sense, not as exciting. The helmet is definitely very awesome. Here's the figure with the armor and helmet and accessories removed. You can see actually underneath the helmet, there was little goggles up there. Those are super cute, I really like those, and I guess they fit the whole pilot theme too. You can see the torso a little better now too. Pixel art, of course, just like all the other LEGO Minecraft figures. Usually LEGO Minecraft torsos only use like one or two colors, so it's nice to see a little bit more than that. There is the back torso print on this figure as well. The gold being used here is actually a pretty cool touch, I like that. And then, of course, it's not a minifigure, but this set also comes with an orange cat. We've been getting these LEGO Minecraft cats in quite a few sets recently, and I really, really like them. The headpiece is pretty much perfect. It was introduced for the Ocelot a few years ago, but in actual Minecraft, Ocelots and cats share the same head design, so it fits really well for LEGO, too. He's got these green eyes and this bright pink nose. A little orange stripe on the top of his head. And then the rest of his body is a pretty simple design, just white and orange. The tail of the back, of course, can be moved up and down. That allows you to give him a little bit of personality. But yeah, I don't have a ton else to say about him. He is rather simple. However, he is a very cool inclusion, one I am very happy to get. I love just getting more diverse LEGO Minecraft animals. And this is a very cool one to add to my collection. I really like him. So, overall, would I recommend this set? For sure, yes, I would. I don't think it's a great starter LEGO Minecraft set. Like, if you don't have any LEGO Minecraft at all, don't pick this one up first. Just because it all feels very specialized, right? Like, the idea of a sky tower doesn't inherently fit into every Minecraft world. And the phantoms and the cat are really, really cool, but both of them are far from the most iconic Minecraft mobs. But if you have an existing LEGO Minecraft collection, this is a great set to add to it. The new Minecraft skin in this set is genuinely pretty amazing, and all the accessories included to the netherite helmet and the elytra both amazing to get. This cat and the phantoms are both new and exclusive to this set. And the actual build's pretty fantastic too, it feels like something I would build in actual Minecraft. It feels like it has purpose within the gameplay, and it uses a lot of cool colors and blocks that other LEGO Minecraft sets have not really taken advantage of, so I really like it for that reason. So yeah, 100%, I would recommend it. The price could be a little lower, but honestly, 60 is fine for it. It's not a bad price, it's just not an amazing price for it. But especially, like, if you see this one on sale, I highly, highly recommend you get it. But those are just my thoughts, let me know what you guys think of this set in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please just like, subscribe if you're new. I do LEGO videos like this almost every day, so if you subscribe, you'll be the first to see them. Thanks for watching, everybody, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.